Well, hello, everyone. This is Al Fadi, and I want to welcome you back to a continuation of this uh, fascinating series about Mecca as the search continues for uh, Mecca as we know it from the standard Islamic narrative compared to findings concerning when did Mecca exist on a map for the first time or any knowledge concerning Mecca. And we've shown so far a number of evidence and facts that contradicts the standard Islamic narrative. Today, we're going to talk about another aspect of that geographical location or place, as uh, Dr. J. Smith would call it, uh, and that's the will of Zamzam. Now, let me tell you about my own understanding of the will of Zamzam growing up, growing up as a Muslim. Of course, I've been to Mecca. Yes, there is water that is, has a special taste to it, by the way, a little unique taste, and it's always known as the uh, water of Zamzam. The idea is that there is a well somewhere in there at that location where this water comes from. The idea that this water continuously gushing, uh, basically, and coming out uh, indispensable, if you wish. You always uh, have it there. But how did it come about? That's the other aspect of my story. The idea is that when Hagar and Ishmael left Abraham, went down to Mecca, she had this child with her. And she was desperate to find him water when she made it all the way, technically speaking, or allegedly to Mecca. And she began to run between two mountains. Which mountains? Safa and Marwa. And she did that seven times. She will go up to one mountain. She'll see a mirage, thinking that that's water. So she'll start sprinting. And then she gets to the other mountain because she didn't find anything. And she'll look the other way and she'll see a mirage. And did that seven times until finally allegedly uh, God sent her an angel and all of a sudden she can see a well known as the well of Zemzem. At least that's the standard Islamic narrative when it comes to the story of Zemzem. What's fascinating is when I when we brought this up about the meme that I said a few episodes ago, there's no water. And if there's no water, there's no food. And if there's no food, there is no man or woman. If there's no man or woman, there's no town, there's no cities, there's no civilization, there's no history. Uh, the enormous amount of backlash that I got from Muslims on that meme, they don't like that meme because they kept on saying, hold on, hold on, Jake, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. The Zamzam well is there. There is water there. And it was there since the time of Abraham because it was Hagar. Now, David, Chapel, forgive him. He didn't, it's not his wife. It's not Abraham's wife. Hagar is nothing more than a slave of his wife, Sarah. It's her slave. And this, as we know, did not take place in Mecca because Abraham was living in Mecca. He, th he threw out uh, Hagar out to the desert, right? So this takes place out in the desert. Nonetheless, here she is looking for water, as you well explained, from these two mountains running back and forth, back and forth, two mountains, couldn't find it, and suddenly this water springs up from inside. So the claims are uh, that th that this has always ex existed from the time of Abraham, and did you notice he said in, it, it is inexhaustible. It is always running for anybody all over the world. Any Muslim who wants this water can get it, and you've had it, and you say it tastes a little different than other waters. Are it we, does. We're going to explain that in a little yeah. bit, but hold on. You've not seen what I'm going to show you. This is all new to you, right? That's right. For this me, at least from your perspective, absolutely, whatever you're going to share right now. Okay, so this comes from the time of Abraham. Let's go put those claims back up there. Uh, some people even say it goes back even as far as Adam and Eve. I'm gonna let's stick with Abraham because the, really it doesn't make sense for Adam and Eve because how can Hagar have suddenly discovered water if it's already there all the time? That's right. So obviously this is from the time of Abraham. According to the narrative, Hagar, not the Sarah, not Sarah, his wife. David got that wrong. She sees it bubbling up. She says, "Stop, stop. Fine, let's go with that." It is inexhaustible, is what David Chappell says, and this is what almost every Muslim was saying on on the, uh, the my Fander films there in the comments. This is inexhaustible, Jay. Therefore, it is the purest, it is the cleanest water. You notice that it has a different taste to it. Uh, it can accommodate not only all the pilgrims there who come to Mecca, uh, but it also accommodates everybody living in Mecca. It is bottled and sent to millions of people all over the world. You can go to many shops and you can see Zamzam water in many of your Islamic shops. On, In fact, in London, they used to have it. In almost every shop I go, there is bottles of Zamzam water that you can get there. Mm -hmm. Did you have it in your home? Well, I mean, rarely that we brought it home simply because we can go there. And, you can go and, and get it yourself. And, and get, yeah, but but it is. It's it's uh, uh, something that is available at uh, Middle Eastern stores sometimes where you can buy uh, the Zamzam 
bottled water. Let me ask you real quickly, where is the Sumzum well when, when you were in the Tumeca? Where is it? Well, I mean, you do not see a well per se simply because it's been modernized. They have a lot of piping and plumbing done to it to where you go underneath. In fact, if you look at a, an aerial image of the Kaaba and the surrounding area, the Haram, basically, you'll see like a, a flight of st uh, stairs, wide flights of stairs that take you down. That's where we go. You go down to the area where you can wash up, you can uh, um, do the ablution in there, you can shower, you know. And there are, you know, uh, various, uh, you know, faucets where you can fill up bottles of water if you want, drink it, you know. And and as you walk in the Haram area, in, in inside, you know, there are people who can give it to you. I mean, for free, obviously. How many? How many people are we talking about? Oh, I mean, gosh, two million. In in the Hajj area at the uh, time, of course, but uh, over the course of the year, probably millions. Okay. There. there are two million that come during the Hajj time. Right. There are two million that actually live in Mecca. So you're talking about four million. Uh, that's a lot of water, right? That's a lot of water for but sure. They all want to drink the water. They all want to have. Well, if you're going coming from all over the world, you're coming to Mecca. You want the Zamzam -zam well water. I mean, the people who go to the, there, of course, they want to taste it. Okay. Let's let me let me go do a quick overview and tell you what we now know about the Zum Zum Well. Now, everything I'm going to show you comes straight out of Google, there's, because there's not much we do know about it until you Google it. And what you will find is this. There is the oldest picture for the Zum Zum Well that we have. Looks pretty rudimentary, doesn't it? There's, what, 1800s is when that picture was taken. Nothing like it is today. So it looks like just a normal well in a normal place. In the 1800s, they had, they, uh, this didn't look like there was very much water. Uh, in 1950s, this picture was taken. That's the Zum Zum well in 1950s. What does it say to you? Could that feed, could that uh, take care of 2 million people? Well, I mean, obviously, that's the whole idea. Those are steps, by the way, where I mean, people can walk down. Muslims will tell you that's what's so fascinating about the fact that it's inexhaustible. Does it look inexhaustible to you right there? This is the 1950s. So far, it doesn't. Okay. Start, it's kind of underwhelming you now, isn't it? Yeah. Now, this, these are all images that I pulled off of Google. I wanted to make sure that anybody can get a hold of this. This is not something I'm making up. This is not something I'm creating out of thin air. Uh, here is a 1953 water, uh, a picture of them drawing water out of the Zum Zum Well. That's the Zum Zum Well. It actually looks like just a backyard well. It doesn't look very large at all, does it? That's true. Not at least to accommodate the, the two million or how many million that would have to need water there. So why in 1953, they built this building over top of it uh, to cover it so that people could go in and drink from it. That was in 1953. This caused a problem because the people that were in circumambulate, can you see the Kaaba behind it? If you look carefully, can you see That's the right. black building? That's, That's the right. Kaaba behind it. Uh, it. It was causing a lot of problems. So they had to find the, in 1963, they had to construct and they had to do, as you said, they had to put it underground. Mm -hmm. And as they put it underground, they dug down deeper and deeper. We're going to see that a little later. Uh, but then today, that's what you need to look for. You need to look for that little circle. I don't know if you saw that when you were circumambulating, but did you see that circle there? There is the indication that that's where the well is, and everybody start going down now. Okay, and that is just 30 meters away from the Kaaba, so 60 feet. Yes, yeah, it's, it's right there. It's, it's very close, it. yeah. okay? Yeah. That is the Zum Zum Well Museum. They even have a museum for it, and you've, you've probably been there, so you've, this is probably familiar with you. Now, here's a niggling problem. The story goes, and you know in the star and I go, that you have... Abraham and his son Ishmael is persecuting Isaac. And so Abraham has to get rid of Ishmael mm -hmm. and Hagar, right? Mm -hmm. That's the story you know. That's the biblical narrative. Okay, so what did he do? He threw them out. Okay, this is yeah. in Mecca. Okay, according right. to the standard, this is happening in Mecca. That's right. He throws them out to where? Into the desert, right? That's correct. And when you're in the desert, there's no water, right? That's correct. If there's no water, you've got to look for it. So yeah, far, so if good. you want to survive, yeah. So what does she do? She goes to Marwa and to Safa. Yep. How far is Marwa and Safa from the Kaaba? Well, they're right there. They're not that far. Wait a minute. I thought you said that, I thought you said that he, she got thrown out into the desert. Yeah. How yeah. far is Marwa and Safa? They're right there. They're not that how far. And so when she finally does find water, how far away is that water from the Kaaba? It's right there. 30 meters. You're talking about just 30 meters away. This is not a desert, folks. She's not outside of Mecca. She's in Mecca. If she wanted to find water, she could have gone to any one of the houses, including Abraham's house, which is just next door, right? Yeah. What? Haven't anybody thought this through? 
If this is the well that Heiger has actually found, it's only 30 feet away, 30 meters away, sorry, 90 feet away. Did I say 60? 90, I better get my figures right. There it is, I'm pointing to it. Can you see where the green arrow is? More than that, doesn't the well commemorate this ha Hagar searching back and forth and then finding the water in the desert, uh, Ishmael, way back in 1900 BC, yeah. right? If Abraham lived next to the Kaaba, then why was Hagar only 21 meters away if she had been cast in the desert, which should be miles away? This makes no sense. Now, I'm going to play the devil's advocate. And uh, what if uh, uh, we come back and say, well, that happened after Abraham moved there and then he built the Kaaba. She was already ahead of him before the Kaaba was built and she was looking for the water and they, she found the water and then later he came in and built the Kaaba. Hold on, hold on, hold on a minute to you. Ishmael and Abraham rebuilt the Kaaba, right? That's right. Well, so what I'm saying Ishmael is... Ishmael and Kaaba, that means this happened before Ishmael was thrown out. Well... I'm just thinking like a Muslim right now. I'm answering you. Yeah. Not like a Muslim. I'm the just asking idea, you he, he was So this happened out before. They were thrown out. According to biblical narrative. Ishmael and Abraham rebuilt the Kaaba. That means Ishmael's still with Abraham. That is true. But what I'm saying is, I'm just trying to tell you what you're going to hear. You know, you are going to I hear this kind you. of argument. They're going to tell you he went all the way down, him and his mother, and then Abraham later came and joined them. You didn't hear what I said. I heard what Abraham you said. and Ishmael built the Kaaba, rebuilt the Kaaba. That's what the Quran says. Rules. That's what Quran says. That means Ishmael's still with Abraham when they rebuilt the Kaaba. That is true. But remember, Islam now, always and now, fills gaps. Which comes first? Abraham you? and Ishmael together or Abraham yeah, or you're, Ishmael and, and uh, you're pointing the Hagar obvious outside in the desert after this event. Contradictions in the story. Bingo. Holes in the narrative, you know. Now, this suggests that this is a man-made well to commemorate an event that happened in 1900 B, but had nothing to do with that event because this is in the wrong place. It's in Mecca. You can't have a well in Mecca if Hagar and Ishmael are out in the desert and Abraham's in Mecca. Yeah. There is the problem. First one. That's just a niggling one. I'm just going to give you a niggling one. Let's get back to this idea. Does the well supply all the water needs of Mecca? Now, does it supply also the water needs of the pilgrims? And does it supply all the water needs of Muslims around the world who want Zam Zam Well? Remember, Mecca has 2 million inhabitants, right? Let's look at the screen as I go by. So we just keep pointing to this. In fact, you can just show as, as we, why don't you point to these as I bring them up so you can see us talking about it. This doubles, however, every time that there is a Hajj. Yeah, yeah, two to three more million, you know, people come and visit Mecca during this uh, major uh, pilgrimage. Okay, so that yeah. doubles it to about four million. Mecca needs about 1,400 liters a second just for its population. 1,400 liters a second just to accommodate its population. That's equivalent to about 51 Olympic-sized pools a day. I got that from Mel. Mel just told me that. He said, Jay, do you know what that means? If you're talking about uh, four, uh, 1,400 liters a second, that would be 51 Olympic-sized pools a day just to accommodate the people that live there. Mm -hmm. If this all coming from Zum Zum, that means Zum Zum, which only supplies about 19 liters a second, you can see, and that's only at the times when it's raining. The rest of the year, about 10 months of the year, it doesn't have any water there. So you can, what are the people who do for the, last, the other 10 months of the year? That's a problem in and of itself. So where do they get all the water for the 2 million Meccans and the other 2 million pilgrims and the many millions of Muslims who buy and drink it around the world? Now, although they advertise it as Zum Zum, I think there's a problem here. Obviously, I'm bringing up something that no Muslim has yet been, answer, been able to answer. And we ask this question, and I've been asking this question, where does this Zum Zum well come from? So let's ask that question. Where in the world does this Zum Zum water come from? Now, this is what you probably didn't know. In order to do that, you need to Google it. And it's simple. Just Google it. And what they'll show you, first of all, they'll show you this well that I just showed you earlier. Mm -hmm. There's the 1950, 1950s. That is not a well that would accommodate 2 million people. Not today. Maybe back in the 1950s, there weren't 2 million people. There were still tens of thousands that were living there because we know even in the 1800s, uh, uh, there were tens of thou thousands of people living in Mecca. So this is 1950. This is in the 20th century. We do know, however, that this is what you were, if you were to go down below it and look and see what happened, this is what you will see. You will see a cap on the well and that there is pumps installed on the top of it with pipes coming to and from the well. Now, remember, according to every Muslim, according to David Chapel, this is, water is provided by God. 
This is water is provided. It's a miracle, and it's inexhaustible. That's what God has done because of Hagar in the desert. It is now water that is there. So most Muslims will come back. Are you saying that God can't do this? Are you saying that God is not able to do this? I'm not questioning God. I'm not questioning at least the real God. I'm questioning whether Allah could do this because if that were the case, then why have they kept the well? And more than that, why have they put all these pipes down into the well? Mm -hmm. There is pictures of the pipes that you talked about. You even knew about this and you live there, right? Right. right. So I mean, why are all these pipes going down into the well? Well, it seems these pipes bring the water to the well from where it, uh, it then is pumped back out of the to the various locations in just the Masjid al-Haram. That's just for the Masjid al-Haram, which is the Kaaba and its surrounding right. encampment, okay? That's where the Marwa and Safa, that is where, that, that area that you look at, that's just where people come to do the Hajj, they do the circumambulation. That's only the place that this is accommodating. And take a look, there are pipes going into the well and pipes coming out of the well. Correct. Proving that this comes from another source. So, where does the pipe come from? Or where does this water come from? You'd like to know, where does it originate? I've been told it originates from God himself. It's from Allah that is providing it. As we know, it's inexhaustible. Well, you want to know the answer? Are you waiting for the answer? Go ahead. You can just Google this. You don't even have to ask me. Here's the answer. It comes from desalination plants that are in your city. There it is. Take a look at it. Have you ever seen this when you were in Jeddah? Oh, of course, we have a whole road na named after it. It's called Atahliya. You know, which is the desalin uh, the uh, you know desalinization plant, and I've even been there to the area where you can see a lot of salt, obviously that is disposed of around that plant. Not just this plant. Yeah. Twenty-seven different plants. Take a look at that map there. Can you notice? I just want to show you here. Then notice there are these ones here. That look at how many they have right there along the Red Sea, and this is on the Gulf over here. This is over 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 on the eastern side of Arabia. Yeah, the eastern side usually try to feed into Riyadh and other areas in the middle of the desert. But what are all these right here feeding into? Do you notice what they're feeding into? Mecca. Well, I mean. We weren't told that, uh, you know, specifically if it is Zamzam or not, but we know it was feeding other cities. Simply Google because, will tell you that. Yeah. Listen, yeah. if you don't trust your own authorities, then go to Google. Google says that, that those ones right there are feeding not just Jeddah, but also Mecca. Because really, Riyadh is your largest city. Your second largest city is Jeddah, where you're right. from. Your third largest city in Arabia is Mecca alongside Medina. Both Mecca and Medina have two million. Mm -hmm. So there's Riyadh, there's Jeddah, there's Mecca, there's Medina up there. Those four cities all need water because they don't have any aquifers. They don't have any natural springs. They don't have any water to feed themselves. They are all dependent. And you're right, Riyadh is dependent on these ones here on the east. The other three major cities are along, along all inland here. They are all dependent on those desalination plants. Right. And not only that, they have to store the waters. They have the largest, those are the largest storing containers anywhere in the world. This is where the water comes from. But it doesn't go down to the Zamzam well. Only a little bit goes to the Zamzam well. That's just for the people who are there in the Masjid al-Haram area. Most of this water goes where? Well, all the desalination plants that have been constructed all over Arabia, who actually constructs those and who actually creates those and who actually builds those plants? God? No. Allah? No. No. You need to go up online and see. And they tell you, you can go to every one of those 27 plants and you can see who actually constructed them. They are all constructed by Acciona, which is a Canadian and a Spanish organization. They are con con constructed by Bechtel. Or, it's uh, a large which is, corporation. Which is here in Virginia, in right. the United States. Right. And they're constructed by Black and Veatch, which is Kansas, and from Kansas City, United States. So they're either constructed by Canadians or by Spanish or by Americans. This has nothing to do with Allah. This has nothing to do with a miracle. The inexhaustible water that David Chappell is talking about actually comes from Spain and Canada and United States. We are the ones that provide it. Take a look at these pictures. You talk about, there's the ones that they bring on, so you can see them already there. They're bringing them on their backs to supply all the people out there. Here are all the watering jugs. Here, look at these big storage houses of water. This is what's going all over the world. Mm -hmm. This is the stuff that's going all over the world to all those stores that sell Zum Zum Well. None of them come from God. Almost none of them come from the Zum Zum Well. They're all called Zum Zum Water. They all come from desalination plants that are constructed by Americans, Canadians, and Spain, Spanish people. But can you see when David Chappell makes a statement like that, and he believed it, 
He didn't, he'd, all he needed to do was Google it and realize that God has never given water to anybody called Adam, I'm sorry, uh, Abraham, or certainly not to Hagar. In fact, I don't even know if there was any well there at the time of 1900 BC, because even the picture we saw in 1800s was very crude. Well, it looks like it was created after the fact. Can you then see why this needs to be nipped in the bud? And once again, we get another hole in the narrative, a hole that is making an awful lot of money for the Saudi Arabian government, but has nothing to do with God, has nothing to do with Abraham, had nothing to do with Hagar or Ishmael, had nothing to do with Muhammad. It has everything to do with profiting for an awful lot of people all over the world who are making a profit off of this dumb zum well. Well, I mean, obviously, uh, many people uh, are, who are Muslim, I, I should say, by faith, they accepted the idea that this well is, as uh, this comedian says, inexhaustible. Uh, this is the way I grew up believing. Uh, every Muslim who goes to the uh, holy uh, mosque area uh, believes in that as well. And yet the question uh, that always comes to your mind, where does it come from? How deep in the ground does it come from? Because you see, I'm a geologist and uh, there always has to be a source, an aquifer, where you get this water from, technically speaking. It's called the Red Sea. Yeah. And it's called desalinization. And depending on how many people need it, they just put, put in more desalination plants. They're up to 27. They say another 13 are being planned because there is such a need, there's such a desire, there is such a market for the Zum Zum well. The Zum Zum well is a huge market all over the world. Well, I mean, let, let's be fair. Uh, not all of them are Zum Zum well, like you said, because they do help the towns who are in the middle of the desert get water. I mean, technically speaking, and the water you get doesn't taste like the Zum Zum water. The Zum Zum water seems like it has special chemicals added to it. And where and who does yeah. the chemical? I haven't even put those yeah. pictures in. Yeah. That is all done outside of Mecca. There's a special plant which actually, sal actually cleans it. And it's one, they say it's the purest water, but who provides the technology for all that cleaning? Yeah, again, maybe the same companies. It's Akiona and Bechtel again, who provides all the cleaning for that water. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm well. sorry to disturb you. I'm just sorry to destroy everything you've grown up with. That's not my intention here. I'm really trying to shut down David Chapel because David Chapel just making that statement there on the David Letterman show has sent people by their droves to go now and get yeah. some, some water. And obviously, I mean, I, I'm in no way um, saying that this well in Mecca is the exact same well that is mentioned, for instance, in the Bible. Uh, we have the story in the Bible, indeed, that Hagar uh, took her son with her she was desperate uh, because he was almost dying, he's uh, thirsty, and she cried out to God, and an angel of the Lord appeared to her and uh, basically showed her a well that God had provided for her. So I'm, I'm definitely a firm believer of that story. Now, to say that that particular event took place in Mecca, there is nothing that corroborates the idea that Hagar, Abraham, Ishmael ever made it there, archaeologically speaking, at least, even historically speaking. Well, stop and think. How many miles are we talking yeah. about if Abraham lived up in Haran and oh, came down to... 1,300 miles? We're talking about 1,000 miles yeah, at least. least. Yeah. How can Hagar and uh, and Ishmael have gone 1,000 miles with no water? Yeah. Well, at least what kind of water she had with her that made her last for 1,300 miles or even 1,000 miles before running out of it, you know? You have to really ask yourself that question, of course. Yeah, there you yeah. go. And Abraham coming and actually finding her there, that means Abraham had gone down to 1,000 miles. Without right. a GPS, that's impressive too. <laughs> I mean, so all that to say is this is the kind of stuff that we like to bring to your attention simply because it just demands asking, you know, just ask it yourself. I mean, you don't have to go and, and do anything. My brother says, just Google it. I mean, that's all you can do. Don't don't trust us. Don't believe in us. You Google everything. Why don't you Google this? I mean, th this really baffles me sometimes. Our Muslim friends are quick to Google refutations to the Bible, refutations to the Christology, refutations to many things. But when it comes to these things, somehow they don't Google it. What do you think they, uh, the reason behind that? Well, I hope Muslims are watching this, and I hope Muslims are listening to what I'm saying, because as even al Fadi is here, he still believed that the Zum Zum well had special water. Even today, he said that. There's something about the taste. There's something different. I've been told all my life that this comes from the inexhaustible source. That is a lie. That's why Muslims, if you're watching this, you need to get away from this lie. If this is all you've been brought up, and this is what you believe, if you, as someone like David Chapel, who, goodness sakes, he's been brought up believing on understanding, you know, modern science, and he believes that, can you then understand why 1.8 billion Muslims are being duped 
something as simple as the Zumzum well. If we can now prove that their Zumzum well has been provided not by God, not by the Saudi Arabian government, it's actually been provided by instrumentations and technology that's coming out of the United States and Canada and Spain. If that's what's providing all this, then I would suggest that you need to wake up and realize you're following the wrong man, the wrong book, and you're following the wrong place, and you're drinking the water. Wrong water. Come on home to the real living water. The living water. His name is Jesus Christ. Come on home. Amen. Amen. And the Lord said that himself in John chapter 7, by the way, that uh, uh, he will give you living water. And that's, of course, the Holy Spirit, the source of life that we have. And he himself, our Lord, is the source of our life as well. Thank you, brother, as always. What's next, by the way, for the sake of our uh, you know, viewers? Before we go, I want to talk about the five stages of the Hajj, which you have done. Right. I want to unpack each one of those five stages, and I want to show you actually that there are actually pre-antecedents to these five stages. We have talked about this, but we're, I'm introducing this because we're going to be introducing something even better in the next year, in 2022. We want to actually show where we think those five stages are because we've now found another source. I'm not going to say what it is today. That's yet to be done. That's yet to be coming out. But I want to look at each one of those five stages and ask you what you feel about each one of these five stages. Because it looks like, as we're finding out with everything in Islam, it looks like Islam has borrowed these as well. Right. So you've heard, uh, um, uh, everyone, uh, that uh, the next episode will focus on those different stages of the pilgrimage itself. And uh, hopefully you're finding this uh, particular video series to be helpful. In fact, it's a companion to a previous series that we did recently called In Search of a Place, talking about Mecca, basically, and all of the historical contradictions between the standard Islamic narrative when it comes to Mecca and facts that actually expose and contradict that particular narrative. No wonder uh, there are a lot of holes in this narrative. And today's topic about the will of Zamzam is no different than that. Thank you, brother. Thank you, everyone. This is Al-Fadi. God bless you. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, Sira International, and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.